He said, then took the chariot at a bound and snatched the reins and whirled the lash around. Before the inspiring God that urged them on, the cursors fly with spirit not their own. And now they reached the naval walls and found the guards repasting while the bowls go round. On these the virtue of his wand he tries and pours deep slumber on their watchful eyes, then heaved the massy gates, removed the bars, and o'er the trenches led the rolling cars. Unseen, through all the hostile camp they went, and now approached Pelides' lofty tent. On firs the roof was raised, and covered o'er with reeds collecting from the marshy shore, and fenced with palisades, a hall of state, the work of soldiers where the hero sat. Large was the door, whose well-compacted strength, a solid pine tree barred of wondrous length, scarce three strong Greeks could lift its mighty weight, but great Achilles singly closed the gate. This Hermes, such the power of God, set wide, and swift delighted the celestial guide, and thus revealed. Hear, prince, and understand, thou owest thy guidance to no mortal hand. Hermes I am, descended from above, the king of arts, the messenger of Jove. Farewell. To shun Achilles' sight I fly. Uncommon are such favors of the sky, nor stand confessed to frail mortality. Now, fearless, enter, and prefer thy prayers. Adjure him by his father's silver hairs. His son, his mother, urge him to bestow whatever pity that stern heart can know. Thus having said, he vanished from his eyes and in a moment shot into the skies. The king confirmed from heaven, alighted there, and left his aged herald on the car. With solemn pace, through various rooms he went and found Achilles in his inner tent. There sat the hero. Alchemist the brave and great automaton attendants gave. These served his person at the royal feast. Around at awful distance stood the rest. Unseen by these the king his entry made, and prostrate now before Achilles laid, sudden a venerable sight appears, embraced his knees and bathed his hands in tears. Those direful hands, his kisses pressed, imbrued with even with the best, the dearest of his blood. As when a wretch, who, conscious of his crime pursued for murder, flies his native clime, just gains some frontier, breathless, pale, amazed, all wa- gaze, all wonder. Thus Achilles gazed. Thus stood the attendants, stupid with surprise, all mute, yet seemed to question with their eyes. Each looked on other, none the silence broke, till thus at last the kingly suppliant spoke. Ah, think, thou favored of the powers divine, think of thy father's age and pity mine. In me that father's reverend image trace, those silver hairs, that venerable face, his trembling limbs, his helpless person see, in all my equal but in misery. Yet now, perhaps, some turn of human fate expels him helpless from his peaceful state. Think, from some powerful foe thou seest him fly, and beg protection with a feeble cry. Yet still one comfort in his soul may rise, he hears his son still lives to glad his eyes, and hearing, still may hope a better day may send him to thee to chase that foe away. No comfort to my griefs, no hopes remain. The best, the bravest of all my sons are slain. Yet what a race, ere Greece to Ilion came, the pledged of many a loved and loving dame. Nineteen one mother bore, dead, all are dead. How oft, alas, how has wretched Priam bled. Still one was left there lost to recompense, his father's hope, his country's last defense. Him too thy rage has slain, beneath thy steel, unhappy in his country's cause, he fell. For him, through hostile camps I bent my way, for him thus prostrate at thy feet I lay. Large gifts proportioned to thy wrath I bear, O hear the wretched, and the gods revere. Think of thy father, and this face behold. See him in me, as helpless as and as old. Though not so wretched, there he yields to me, the first of men in sovereign misery. Thus forced to kneel, thus groveling to embrace the scourge and ruin of my realm and race. Suppliant my children's murderer to implore, and kiss those hands, yet reeking with their gore. These words, soft pity in the chief, inspire, touched with the deep remembrance of his sire. 
Then with his hand, as prostrate still he lay, the old man's cheek he gently turned away. Now each by turns indulged the gush of woe, and now the mingled tides together flow. This low on earth, that gently bending o'er, a father one, and one a son deplore. But great Achilles' different passions rend, and now his sire he mourns, and now his friend. The infectious softness through the heroes ran, one universal solemn shower began. They bore as heroes, but they felt as man. Satiate at length with unavailing woes, from the high throne divine Achilles rose, the reverend monarch by the hand he raised, on his white beard and form majestic gazed, not unrelenting. Then Serene began with words to soothe, soothe the miserable man. Alas, what weight of anguish hast thou known, unhappy prince? Thus guardless and alone, two pass through foes, and thus undaunted face the man whose fury has destroyed thy race. Heaven sure has armed thee with a heart of steel, a strength proportioned to the woes you feel. Rise then, let reason mitigate your care. To mourn avails not, mourn man is born to bear. Such is, alas, the God's severe decree. They, only they are blessed and only free. Two urns by Jove's high throne have ever stood. The source of evil one and one of good. From thence the cup of mortal man he fills. Blessings to these, to those distributes ill. To most he mingles both. The wretch decreed to taste the bad unmixed is cursed indeed. Pursued by wrongs, by meager famine driven, he wanders, outcast, both of earth and heaven. The happiest taste not happiness sincere, but find the cordial draft is dashed with care. Who more than Peleus shone in wealth and power? What stars concurring blessed his natal, natal hour? A realm, a goddess to his wishes given, graced by the gods with all the gifts of heaven. One evil yet o'ertakes his latest day, no race succeeding to imperial sway. An only son, and he, alas, ordained to fall untimely in a foreign land. See him in Troy, the pious care decline of his weak age, to live the curse of thine. Thou too, old man, hast happier days beheld, in riches once in children, once excelled, extended Phrygia, owned thy ample reign, and all fair Lesbos's blissful seats contain, and all wide Hellespont's unmeasured main. But since the god his, his hand has pleased to turn, and fill thy measure from his bitter urn, what sees the sun but hapless heroes falls? War and the blood of men surround thy walls. What must be must be. Bear thy lot, nor shed these unavailing sorrows o'er the dead. Thou canst not call him from the Stygian shore, but thou, alas, mayst live to suffer more. To whom the king, O favorite of the skies, here let me grow to earth, since Hector lies on the bare beach deprived of obsequies. O oh, give me Hector, to my eyes restore his course, and take the gifts I ask no more. Thou, as thou mayest, these boundless stores enjoy. Safe mayst thou sail, and turn thy wrath from Troy. So shall the, thy pity and forbearance give a weak old man to see the light and live. <laughs>